Hello, welcome back. In this particular video, we're going to consider indefinite integrals and how to solve them using the substitution method. As you recall, when we evaluate an antiderivative or an indefinite integral, such as the integral of f of x dx, we're finding a function, capital F of x, or a family of functions, capital F of x plus c, where the derivative of capital F is lowercase f. The concept seems simple. We're simply undoing the differentiation. And for these basic techniques of, of integration, finding an antiderivative is fairly easy. We just have to match the form that we're looking for. Okay. But in reality, many times finding an antiderivative is fairly difficult. So we're going to consider the use of the substitution method to evaluate the indefinite integrals. We'll see that the substitution method undoes the chain rule which in general allows us to see more clearly one of the above uh, basic techniques of integration. So let's quick review the chain rule. Suppose we want to take the derivative of the quantity 6x squared plus 5x minus 1 raised to the fourth power. We know that the derivative, we bring that power down, 4 times 6x squared plus 5x minus 1 raised to the third power, and then we take the derivative of what's inside. 12x plus 5. If we consider another way to look at this, we could say, well, let's let u equal 6x squared plus 5x minus 1. When we take the derivative of u to the fourth with respect to x, we get 4u cubed, and then we multiply that times the derivative of u with respect to x, where u is equal to 6x squared plus 5x minus 1. So therefore, du dx is equal to 12x plus 5. Now again, knowing that finding an antiderivative is undoing the derivative, we know that the antiderivative of 4 times 6x squared plus 5x minus 1 cubed times 12x plus 5 should give us 6x squared plus 5x minus 1 to the fourth power plus c. But when we simply look at this antiderivative, it does not match one of the basic forms that we saw on the previous slide. So the chain rule, or I'm sorry, the substitution method is a way of looking for what if I replace this inside function with something fairly basic like u. I find the derivative of u with respect to x. Then when I solve for du, I get 12x plus 5. And then I can see that this would become, this integral would become 4 times u cubed, 12x plus 5 dx. We make the substitution of du. And this is a basic integration form. Okay. So that's what our goal is in this video. We're going to look at several different examples and use substitution to make uh, the integral much easier to, to do. Okay. And as we noted, the chain rule says that when we take the derivative of a composition of functions, f evaluated at g of x, we uh, get the derivative of f with uh, evaluated at g of x times g prime of x, and then undoing that chain rule, or undoing the differentiation, we note that the integral of f prime of g of x times g prime of x dx will give us f of g of x plus c. So in, in recognizing how to perform substitution, it's really important to note we need to find g of x and g prime of x pairs. So in general, we follow three steps when using this method. First, we want to identify our function g of x. We're going to call it u. Then we find the derivative of u with respect to x and call that g prime of x. And then we solve for du in terms of dx. Next, we make the substitutions to get a new integral, which only contains the variable u and du but no x's or dx's. 
And then we find the antiderivative and rewrite the answer in terms of the original variable. In other words, we need to undo the substitution once we found the antiderivative. So let's look at another example. Let's look at the integral of x over x squared plus 1 dx. Now a lot of times when you're looking for something to, to apply the substitution, you want to look for something that's raised to a power, and that something becomes your g of x, or if something's in the denominator, a lot of times we can use that uh, as our u, or our g of x, and see if we've got its derivative in the numerator, in which case we would have something where we could use uh, the antiderivative would involve the natural log. Um, but again, it's, it's really important to know those uh, basic techniques of integration um, because that's, that's the power of the substitution is recognizing um, which form that it's going to take once we make a substitution. So let's let u equal that denominator, x squared plus 1. Then the derivative of u with respect to x is equal to 2x, and solving for du, I get 2x dx. Now, this isn't a complete match because I can see that I've got a u in the denominator, x squared plus 1, but I don't have a complete du in the numerator. I've got x dx, but I don't have 2x dx. So it would be really nice if I had a 2 right there, but I can't just go in and put a constant in there without also then dividing by that constant. So I could multiply by a form of 1 and say, well, that would work because then I would see 2x dx to be du. And that's exactly what we're going to do. The integral of x over x squared plus 1 dx becomes 1 half times 2x over x squared plus 1 dx. And the reason I do that is because I can then see that I've got this 2x dx, which I'm just going to call du. So I've got 1 half, the integral of 1 over u du. The integral of 1 over u du is simply one of those basic techniques, uh, namely the natural log. So I've got 1 half times the natural log of absolute value of u plus c. I have to undo my substitution, so instead of u, I'm going to write x squared plus 1, but x squared plus 1 is always positive, so I don't need the absolute value. And there it is. Now I'm going to look at a slight variation of the format we just used when using substitution. We're going to again start with u equals x squared plus 1. The derivative is the same, du equals 2x dx. But sometimes it may not be obvious what algebra or what arithmetic we need to do. So instead, I'm going to solve for dx so that when I go back to the original integral, x over x squared plus 1 dx, I see x squared plus 1, or my u in the denominator. And instead of dx, I'm going to write du over 2x. And I'm still going to have a little bit of x in there, which I've got a temporary mixture of two variables. But it's going to work out OK in this case, because I can see that I've got an x over 2x, which simply just becomes 1 half the integral of 1 over u du. And so it's important to see that in this case, I now have an integral that's only in terms of u. So as long as you haven't integrated yet, as long as you get rid of the x's and integrate only in u in this particular case, you're OK. So now I can find the antiderivative. I'm back to where I was before. I've got 1 half times the natural log of u in absolute value plus c. I undo the substitution, so u is equal to x squared plus 1. So I've got 1 half the natural log of x squared plus 1 plus c. And I can check my answer simply by taking the derivative of 1 half natural log of x squared plus 1 plus c and see if I get back to x over x squared plus 1. And very easily you can see that I do. Let's consider another example. Let's look at the integral of 8x cubed minus 2x times the square root of 12x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 1. Again, I make the recommendation that when you're using substitution, the substitution uh, is based on something that's raised to a power or something that's in a denominator many times. You want to look for that function inside of another function. So let's let u equal 12x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 1. And its derivative is 48x cubed minus 12x. And that might be of some concern because initially you don't see 8x cubed minus 2x. But if I solve for du, I get 48x cubed minus 12x times dx. But I can also factor out a 6 
from our coefficients. And so that du over 6 equals 8x cubed minus 2x dx. And so I can see that in my original integral, 8x cubed minus 2x dx be, is going to get substituted by du over 6. And the square root of 12x to the 4th minus 6x squared plus 1 will get substituted by the square root of u. I can pull that 1 sixth out in front. I can rewrite the square root of u as u to the 1 half. So now the integral of 1 sixth u to the 1 half du, I simply add 1 to my power, divide by that power, do a little bit of arithmetic, undo the substitution, and I get 12x to the 4th minus 6x squared plus 1, all raised to the 3 halves power, divided by 9 plus c. And again, we can check the derivative to see that we get back to 8x cubed minus 2x times the square root of 12x to the 4th minus 6x squared plus 1. I'll leave the checking of the derivative to you. Another example. Suppose we want to integrate the tangent of 3t dt. Now, we're going to use two substitutions in this case, but only at one at a time. So first, let's make the substitution that u is equal to 3t. So du dt equals 3, or du equals 3 dt, or du over 3 is equal to dt. So making those substitutions, I get the tangent of 3t dt is it, the integral of tangent of 3t dt is the integral of tangent of u du over 3. That 1 over 3 can come out in front. But again, because tangent is not uh, one of those basic integration formulas that we see, I'm going to rewrite tangent as the sine of u over cosine of u. Because, again, I'm, going, I'm looking for something where I can match one of the basic anti-differentiation formulas. And if I see, if I let cosine of u be another variable, we'll call it w, the derivative of cosine of u is negative sine of u, which we see that and then we see a, a significant part of that in the numerator. So I'm going to let w equal cosine of u, dw du is equal to negative sine of u. And so ultimately I'm going to say that negative dw is equal to the sine of u du. And sine of u du is there in the numerator. Cosine of u, I'm going to make the substitution as w. So one-third sine of u over cosine of u du will become 1 third times the integral of negative 1 over w dw. So I see that 1 third times the integral of sine of u over cosine of u du becomes 1 third times the integral of negative 1 over w dw. And again, I see uh, an application of um, one of my basic techniques of integration, and I get negative 1 third the natural log of w in absolute value plus c, I'm going to first undo the substitution of w, where w is equal to cosine of u, and then I have to undo this, the original substitution and replace u with 3t. And again, we can check to verify that the derivative of negative one-third natural log of cosine of 3t in absolute value plus c gets us back to the tangent of 3t. We're going to look at one more example. In this case, let's look at the integral of cosine squared of theta d theta. I see what I'm supposed to do. I've got a function, cosine of theta, raised to a power. So I'm going to let u equal the cosine of theta. Well then, du d theta is equal to the negative sine of theta. And solving for du, I've got negative sine of theta d theta. Now here's where we see a problem. I certainly have cosine squared, but for my d theta, I don't have anything involving sine. So this is not a substitution that's going to work for us. So instead, 
I'm going to recall, I'm going to make use of my half angle formulas. Now many of you, I'm sure, remember your half angle formulas. This is how I remember them. I remember, first of all, the double angle formula, cosine of 2 theta equals cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. Or I can remember that it also takes two other forms simply by making use of the Pythagorean identity that cosine squared theta plus sine squared of theta is equal to 1. So if I simply solve for cosine squared or simply solve for sine squared theta, and I get one of these other two forms. So either of these match the double angle formula for cosine of theta. Now if I want to make a substitution for cosine squared, I simply have to solve cosine 2 theta equals 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 for cosine squared of theta, and I get cosine squared theta equals 1 plus cosine of 2 theta divided by 2. If instead of the integral of cosine squared of theta d theta, I wanted the integral of sine squared theta d theta, I would proceed using uh, the double angle formula for cosine, but simply choose the 1 minus 2 sine squared theta and solve for sine squared of theta instead. So I'm going to replace cosine squared of theta with 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2, and when I find the integral, I can pull that one half out in front. I then am, I can take the integral of d theta plus the integral of cosine of 2 theta, and each of those are multiplied by one half. And now I can use substitution on 2 theta. So I'm going to let u equal 2 theta. du d theta is equal to 2. So therefore, d theta is equal to 1 half du. So 1 half times the integral of d theta plus 1 half times the integral of cosine of 2 theta d theta, which all is equal to our original integral, cosine, of squared, cosine squared of theta d theta. And I get 1 half the integral of d theta plus 1 fourth the integral of cosine of u du. The integral of 1 half d theta becomes 1 half theta. And then I add 1 fourth sine of u plus c, I undo the substitution for u, and I get 1 half theta plus 1 fourth sine of 2 theta plus c. And again, I can take the derivative and verify that the derivative of 1 half theta plus 1 fourth sine of 2 theta plus c is cosine squared of theta.